In this video, we will look at some examples of different ways we can use Prokoc to calculate a joint angle. Prokoc can calculate joint angles between two vectors or between two segments, so I'll start by showing how we can create vectors and segments. I will then demonstrate how to calculate a simple angle between two vectors, and then how you can calculate a 3D angle between two segments. I will finish with a brief discussion on how to interpret your segment axes and joint angle outputs. To create a vector, you will need to select two points. These can be between two markers, two calculated points such as joint centers, or a combination of the two. Within my scheme in the variables tab, I'll add a new element and call it lug vector. I will uh, select vector and then choose from A to B. I'll then click on the two markers within the workspace. Let's say the uh, ankle and knee marker on the lateral side. You can see as soon as I select the knee marker, I get a preview of where uh, that vector should be. If I want to change the points, then I will have to use the drop down menu. So I can change it to calculated points such as uh, the right ankle joint center and the right knee joint center there. And you can see now the vector has changed accordingly. To create a segment, you can either use points and or vectors. To create a specific segment orientation, Procalc uses cross products so it can be helpful to review that concept now before you continue further with this video. So when I add an element and specify segment, you can see that there are many available functions. The first six create segments from points only, while the second six are from a point and two vectors. We will look into the other segment options in future videos. So let's look at how to create a segment from only points. I will choose the first option, which states origin A, x-axis is from A to B, and the z-axis is a cross product between A to B and A to C. So the first point I will select will be the origin. The second point will form a vector which starts from A and then goes to B and forms the x-axis. The third point helps to create a second vector, which when crossed with the first vector helps to create the z-axis. The two are then crossed to form an orthogonal y-axis. So let's go back to our model that we were working on in the last video. I would calculated my right hip joint center using a regression equation, and then using the chord function calculated my right knee joint center. I will now use these points to create my femur segment. So I'll add an element, I will call it femur segment. I will select segment from the list, and then select the first option. I will select the right knee joint center as my origin, and then my right knee as my first marker, and then the right hip joint center as my second marker. As soon as I select the hip joint center, you can see that the segment axis appear. If the axes are not aligned as you had hoped, you can simply choose a different order for the axes and it will maintain the same points. This is probably my favorite aspect about Prokoc because I don't need to change any code or rerun my model in order to get my segment axes correct. I can simply select a different function from the list and watch as my segment orientation changes. The main limitation with these first six calculations is that you are forced into using the first marker in the definition of your origin and both vectors. If you would like a bit more freedom, I would use the second set of six calculations which bases the segment orientation around vectors. So let's look at creating the femur segment using the other method, that is using a point and two vectors. I will go ahead and create my vectors first. So right upper leg vector, I will choose vector, then from A to B, I'll choose from the right knee joint center to my right hip joint center. Then I will create another vector for right knee lateral. Select vector from A to B from my right knee joint center to my right knee. And now I'll go ahead and create my, my second segment. So this will be called femur segment underscore two, just so that we don't have a conflict with the first segment. I will select segment, and now I'll look at the second six uh, set of calculations and choose the first one within that group. Okay, so my point's gonna be the right knee joint center again. My first vector is going to be that lateral knee vector, and then my second vector will be the upper leg vector. And as you can see, this orientation is the same as the first segment. If I want to align this so that it's the same as plug and gate, however, what I will need to do is I will need to invert these two vectors. So this will be the right upper leg vector, 
and this will be the uh, lateral knee vector, and then I will need to choose origin is A, the Z axis will be B, and then the X axis will be B cross C. In this first example, I will calculate a joint angle based on two vectors. I have created an upper leg vector and a lower leg vector and want the internal angle between the two. Within my open scheme in the variables tab, I will add an element. I will call it angle. I will select angle. And if my two arguments are vectors, my only options are the first two. So I will select angle between A and B. I will select my upper leg vector and then my lower leg vector. And then you can see the preview there. However, if I'm after the complementary angle, I will need to either change the order of my vectors or its direction. In general, the angle will be calculated by translating the tail of vector B to the tail of vector A, if it is not already positioned that way. So with this in mind, I will need to change the direction of the lower leg segment. So let's select that and we'll reverse the order so that it is now going from right knee to right ankle. Now if I go back to my angle calculation, you can see that it is the angle that I wish to calculate in the first place. To demonstrate how to calculate a 3D angle using segments, I will go back to the model that I have been working on. I calculated an ankle joint center using the chord function. I then created two vectors, a lower leg vector and a lateral ankle vector, and then also my tibia segment. The orientation of the axes for each segment was designed to match the orientation found within plug and gate as we can see here in the picture. So I've got my tibia segment and my femur segment. Adding an element, and I will call it right knee angle underscore PC, and then selecting angle. I'm given two main choices for 3D angles, Euler angle or a continuous Euler angle. The simple difference between the two is that the Euler angle is restricted to angles within a range of negative 180 to positive 180, while the continuous Euler angles are not. Each option has six choices which correspond to the standard Euler angle order of rotations. So if I want to mimic plug and gate, I would select Euler angle Y, X, Z between A and B. I would select my parent segment first, which is the femur, and then my child, which is the tibia. I would then also go ahead and negate all of the components so that the angles are calculated relative to a floating axis. For more information as to why this is done, please contact Vicon Support. Earlier in this video, when we had created a segment, we saw the segment axes appear and were colored red, green, and blue. This always corresponds to the X, Y, and Z axes respectively, as we can see here with the femur segment. However, when we calculate a joint angle, the color scheme corresponds to the order of rotations, irrespective of the segment axis alignment. Let's select our knee joint angle here. The order selected was Y, X, Z, so now the rotation above the segment's Y axis is the first angle and is thus colored red. Similarly, rotation above the segment's X axis is the second angle and is colored green. As the segment's Z axis and rotation above this axis is last, this color scheme does not change. So I'll just play this through just so you can kind of see the difference. So we can see right now that our flexion extension angle is the red X axis being changed, but if I click back on my segment, we can see that that was actually the green y-axis. So just to summarize, the color order is always red, green, and blue. For segments, it corresponds to x, y, z, while for joint angles, it corresponds to the order of rotation. Thank you for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions about your hardware or software, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at vicon.com. Please also feel free to check out the links below for additional documentation and videos.